Byton, a company you probably never heard of before until January of this year when they have unveiled their very first electric SUV at CES in Vegas. Now, I was there to cover it for you guys. And uh, of course, you can see that video on uh, my channel. Uh, but uh, this week, uh, they have traveled all the way to Milan for the Milan Design Week to have a specific premiere for their European target audience. And I've traveled there with them. Um, today is Saturday, so normally I feature live interviews. This time around, because I was there, I pre-recorded uh, my interview. Actually, there are two. One is with Byton's CEO, Karsten uh, Breitfeld, and another one is with VP of Marketing, uh, Henrik Wenders. Um, I'm gonna show it to you both, uh, and we're gonna get going right now. All right, uh, without further ado, uh, here's my conversation with uh, Karsten. We talked about quite a few things and I think you find it pretty interesting. So let's talk about your customers. Uh, who, is, who are you targeting as your customers? Is this people who are already driving an electric car? Or it, 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 these are the people where Byton is going to be their very first electric car and right now they're driving a gas car? It's definitely both, but we are not only heading for the segment of electric cars, but we really are heading for the segment of premium cars today. So our competitors is BMW, Mercedes, Audi and Jaguar, all the premium brands of today. And um, um, if, you, if you look to the potential uh, in China, this is a market which overall has 28 million vehicles a year. Um, uh, a quite big number of them being premium segment, so there's a huge market opportunity for us. And so you did mention Tesla. Do you feel like that's, you're just going to be going after the BMW Mercedes uh, owners to, to switch them to here? H how do you view Tesla as a competitor or, or somebody who's kind of maybe on your, on your, on your side? No, Tesla definitely is a competitor as well, but it's important in the case of Byton, we are not talking so much about electric cars. The Byton car is electric, but Byton is a next generation of car. It's a smart device on wheels. It's a connected, auto-driving connected car. And we don't see so many competitors in this area right now. This will be something uh, pretty new where we want to be leading in the market. You mentioned smart device on wheel, and you know the Byton stands for bytes on wheels. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. So where maybe the cars are no longer cars as the way we think about it, but it's actually technology that we take with us on the road. Yeah, so definitely it's still a car. Uh, the, the, the driving part, the powertrain, the chassis and the body, this is still a, a, a car and we are going to, to adapt the, the knowledge and the status quo of premium car industry to make this happen. But the real new thing is the smartness. And being smart means uh, it is high, has high speed connectivity, it has a big screen, has a very easy to use uh, UI. So everything which you are used from your, from your smart device, you, you can do with our car by driving and the car will will drive you by itself in auto driving mode more and more. So we have to answer the question what kind of user experience, new user experience we give to our customers. And this is what Byton is about. Okay, so you just mentioned autonomous driving. Uh, what kind of technology you guys are using and have you learned maybe something from the failures of other, uh, you know, this is a bad month for self-driving cars, right? Uh, what kind of technology are you going to be using? Are you going to be using LiDARs or are you just going to stick with ra uh, radars and cameras? Yeah, we are going to do this in different steps. So when we go to production end of next year, we will have a level three autonomous driving, which don't use LiDAR technology. Um, and it basically will be a very good at autonomous driving experience, mainly on highways. So the next step, level four, uh, we are aiming for in the end of 2020. This is definitely will have, at least for the for, for, for this foreseeable time, LiDAR technology as well. And uh, yeah, obviously we are learning from everything what's going on right now. And there are some very unfortunate uh, uh, cases. On the other hand, if you want to bring in new technology, to some degree, you have to accept this kind of things. Um, and uh, autonomous driving will definitely reduce the number of traffic accidents. It will definitely reduce the number of deaths people from traffic accidents. Are you saying humans are bad drivers? Um, they are maybe not bad drivers, but they could do better. And uh, a machine definitely can, can, can do better, uh, but it can't do perfect as well because there's some physics behind it. So we will face accidents even in the future, but not much less than we have today. You in California a lot, you know we have a lot of bad drivers there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so let, let's talk about something uh, else. So right now, electric car sales are only about, you know, with all the efforts, with all the headlines yeah. we made, it's only 1% of yeah. all global sales. 
And they're not growing that much. You know, 20% over each year, that's nothing. Um, when do you think and what has to happen in order for us to actually finally uh, be appealing to the rest of the world, to the rest of the 99%? Yeah, they, from my understanding, there are two reasons behind it why it doesn't really blow up right now or explode right now. The first one is what people are doing now, they do conversions. They just put a, an electric powertrain in a, tra a traditional car. This results uh, in, a, in a product which is, um, has less space and costs more than a comparable one with an ICE. So why should people really buy it? And even if you look to Tesla, Tesla, Tesla has a, I think did a tremendous job over the last 15 years, creates this brand and, and some new concepts. But the cars are still to some degree traditional cars. So only if you make it to, to step into a new dimension and really give the people a completely new experience, like iPhone, like, like, like the iPhone did um, uh, compared to the Nokia phone, only then you can really do a, a big step in the market. And the second thing is, uh, if you look to the products you can buy today, I, I drive a Tesla Model X in California right now, and by the way, I like it, I like the concept, but it's a very expensive car, so this is not, not designed for, for, for the volume market. So we have to bring the cost to a level where we really can make it affordable for the people. And, and Biden is heading for a price position of 45,000 US dollar for, for, for this entry model, and we feel that this is a, a sweet spot in the market where we really can generate volume. So having an affordable price and some really new product features, a new user experience, this will make us um, a volume. One thing you didn't mention, but I feel like it's holding back most of the people, uh, is that uh, you know the, the, the charging infrastructure that's still lacking pretty much everywhere. Uh, what, what, what are your view on this and how would Byton solve it or what, what would Byton uh, customers really rely on as far as you know, fast charging and, and travel? First of all, I think uh, even today it's not as bad as many people think. Many people discussing about it don't know the facts or they use it as an excuse to my, to my feeling. My Tesla has a range of 295 miles, which is around 400, 500 kilometers. I have a charging station in my home which can charge with around 10 kilowatt um, um, so uh, uh, overnight it can be completely charged. If I drive in California or if I even drive in big cities, I've been in Hong Kong for, for, for some time, there is a fast charging network I can use. So to be honest, this range of this car, I never really use it. I don't need it. If it would have only half of it, it would be completely enough for me. Now, uh, it will be all about having charging infra in the home of the people. In private houses, this is not a big problem. In uh, uh, whatever, skyscrapers, uh, with, with garage, there has to be some investment done. But this can be solved. And again, even today, if you really step into it, you will find it's not as bad as people think. But it needs some improvement in infrastructure. It was definitely fun talking to Karsten. We probably could go for a while. He was obviously short on time. Um, and just like, you know, there's no secret that I absolutely love what this brand is doing. I feel like they're uh, one of the most exciting startups. They're really innovating. They're definitely putting the technology into their cars that, that I haven't seen in any other prototype. So I'm really excited to see what's going to happen next. Um, now, my second interview with uh, was with their VP of Marketing, Henrik Wenders. And we also talked about quite a few interesting things um, and I'm gonna uh, play that for you uh, uh, just in a second just wanted to remind you guys that this show and uh, this channel is sponsored by Evanex the aftermarket accessories for Tesla if you're looking to shop there and if you want to save a few bucks there is discount code in the description of this video all right without further ado I'm gonna um, uh, get uh, going uh, with um, showing you this the second part of the segment uh, and that's my interview with Henrik here we go. Uh, some people have questions, obviously. Uh, for example, you know, um, yet another electric car. But what about the infrastructure for charging? Number one thing that kind of holds people back is the fact they say, well, what if we travel? And how are we going to fast charge? I mean, Tesla has superchargers. What do you guys see as far as a solution for that for Byton? Okay, I mean, the good news is actually that there's a great infrastructure developing, right? So right now, we are already looking at a great infrastructure, which is enable even long distance drives. And uh, so what, we, what you have to make sure are two things. First, that your device, the EV, is perfectly connectable so that it can digest even fast charging, that have a good charging infrastructure on board so that it can absorb even 22 kilowatts or even 80 kilowatts so wherever you want to charge
large that the infrastructure on board can do so. On top of that, you have to liaise with the best infrastructure partners out there. And they're quite plenty. And there's a big movement going on. Uh, Electrify America, there are many things taking place in the US. And uh, there are great companies out there we are talking to, I mean, ChargePoint and so on and so forth. So there's quite a good infrastructure we are going to partner with uh, and tomorrow, in order to make sure that everyone who's going to go for a Biden will make uh, can charge uh, her or his car wherever she or he wants. So the charge point, like you mentioned, right, they've been around for a while, but they're still struggling to do level two charging and everything. Do you see them actually moving forward and supporting cars for level two charging or any kind of fast charging? Or do you think there will be another infrastructure that's kind of a coming out on top of that? Or do you think current ones like charge point can pull it off? I think that, uh, I mean, this, I cannot answer how the market is going to uh, develop. But what I can say, we have to make sure that we can apply the technology, right? So from Shademo in Japan, phase one, phase two, and so that we have the ability that it can be used. Yeah? So if we say, okay, it's not relevant, let's not develop it, let's not apply it, then we would make a big mistake. Let's talk about production. Uh, you guys are starting production next year, correct? But um, a lot of people in my audience, you know, they say, hey, we've been lied to before. We got lucid air. We got fear of the future. How are you guys different? How are you guys going to pull it off and actually bring this to production? Uh, it's a fair point because uh, this will be the key question. Who of the new players uh, on this um, uh, world market is going to make it? And uh, from our perspective, only those are going to make it who know what they're talking about. In our case, we did it already, so we have a huge automotive uh, background and expertise. We know how to engineer and to produce uh, and manufacture cars. The key question is industrialization. Only those players who can industrialize the product on a high-end quality level are only those ones who are going to survive. So building a show car is an easy walk in the park. But to industrialize a product like a car, which is super complex, that's the key challenge. But knowing who's with me in this, uh, in the, on this mission, I know that we have the right people with us on board with a great automotive background. And uh, on top of that, we are not just building a good looking AV, we are also building the next generation smart device. And this is why at Biden, Two literacies are equally at home, the automotive one as well as the digital one. And both are working hand in hand together in order to make sure that the concept we are presenting here in form of the Biden concept is going to be enjoyable, experienceable, also with a serial production car. And this is uh, why this car is not just a design model, it's 80%, I would say even more, a representation of the serial production car you're going to see end of next year on the, next year on the market. Now, you're going to produce this car, you're going to make it in China, correct? Is there a factory there already, or what is the plan for actual factory production? Okay, so we are currently building our plant uh, in Nanjing. So uh, um, I've just been there last week. Uh, the first part of the plant is ready, our trial building. In this uh, building, we are currently producing the first prototypes, uh, which uh, we need in order to get the relevant uh, uh, licenses and, um, um, and also which we need for the homologation process because uh, we are not building a product in China for China only. We are going to build this product for the world market. And this is the reason why we are industrializing the process in a way that we are homologating, as you call it, homologating the product. And this is the reason why uh, already uh, mid of 2020, this car will be available in the United States and shortly after also in Europe. So I was going to ask you about that. Um, I can't think of a single Chinese-based company that especially makes electric cars that mm -hmm. ever made it out of China. Yeah. Um, how are you guys going to be different? Because you're planning to launch it in China, but then uh, expand it to US and uh, Europe. How are you going to pull that off? Um, it starts with the DNA. So the, the DNA of those companies you are having in mind is completely different. These are pure Chinese companies. They are 100% Chinese and they started in China and they started with a focus on China only. Uh, in our case, it's different. Our company is global. Uh, so we have our R&D center also in the United States, in the Silicon Valley, so in Santa Clara, so where we have not only the software development and software engineering, we also do the car vehicle engineering 
over there because we have to make sure that it's a perfect, uh, perfect merge between hardware and software. So the hardware will be designed around the software, so to say. So this is why this is taking place in the US already. Then our design hub with uh, um, uh, many different nations, uh, so we have more than 40 nations in the company, um, is based in, uh, in Germany because uh, there we do have the, the, the experience of the premium automotive industry and we have the entire uh, landscape which we need in order to deliver supreme premium car design. And then, of course, we have also China, where we also have our R&D center, where we do the uh, industrialization, because uh, there's only one market in the world where perfect quality production is taking place. And there are many famous brands which are producing their devices yeah, So in Asia, because... No. no. You're kidding me. <laughs> so this is why we believe that this is exactly the right uh, environment for us to produce a high-end quality car. Okay, so um, let's talk about specs. Um, tell us about the sizes of the batteries, the range. Are you guys planning a, a single motor, dual motor, four-wheel drive? Uh, and also, will there be a performance maybe a, a model? So. Um, we will have the, the, the rear wheel drive and on top of that also the all wheel drive option. So we will have the entry battery pack uh, and uh, then we also have this uh, uh, extended battery pack for, for those customers who would like to have more range on board. Um, so that's, uh, that's what we are going to deliver. Regarding the, the, the acceleration and the velocity topic, of course we all know EV is quite fun, right? But uh, um, our uh, um, answer to the uh, EV market is not providing even more acceleration and more fun to drive. In our, in, with us, it's not about racing and acceleration and fun to drive. It will, will be fun to drive in this car, but uh, with our, in our DNA, we are focusing on a different form of mobility. Because at the end of the day, uh, many people are just commuting and uh, having regular rides. So all the speed limitations, all the traffic. So yes, it's nice to accelerate up to 155 Five miles per hour, but where can you experience it? It's not relevant to this extent from our perspective. But if you want to, if you want to design a car which can do so, you're changing the entire infrastructure. Because if you want to be able to accelerate and to drive a car up to 155 miles per hour, then the entire body of this car needs to be able to do so. And that means a lot of weight you are putting on board to make it possible and that's weight we are not putting on board so that's the reason why we want to focus on range and we want to focus on the UI UX experience we are focusing on this digital in environment we want to provide we think it's much more relevant having displays and having a seamless connectivity we rather invest in more antennas we are going to integrate which are providing hundred times the connectivity status of uh, in comparison to the cast on the roads today so what are the uh, range, uh, what, are, what are the ranges and battery sizes uh, once you actually start production? So we will have an entry range of uh, 350 kilometers uh, and the, the maximum range is uh, 500, uh, 510 kilometers. Uh, so that's the starting point. But of course we will partner with uh, uh, battery cell suppliers, uh, which are on continuously continue to invest uh, in the cell increase and uh, I think that within the next 10 years we will see a quite a huge increase uh, in terms of cell performance and this is of course what we will offer in our product portfolio so that you can upgrade the battery and that you can uh, enjoy even more range uh, down the road of uh, our production uh, life cycle. Okay, so Let's say I'm a Tesla driver, and I'm not a, I'm, 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 I'm open-minded Tesla driver, okay? Uh, and this car all of a sudden appears in the market, and let's say you hire me to work at your dealership, or service, or whatever you're gonna call it. Mm -hmm. um, what would be my line as far as, why would I take somebody out of a Tesla? What would, what, why would they switch from Tesla, or, Jaguar I pays whatever yeah. to this Biton. I think uh, we all know that uh, purchase reason number one globally, wherever you are, uh, whoever customer you talk to, is design. So first, uh, I think you as a Tesla driver need to uh, uh, get the feeling, yes, you could see yourself, you could imagine yourself in a Biton. Then on top of that, um, it's about the value for money, right? The consumers are intelligent. They know what they get. 
and they know what they can experience. And here we come because when you look at the interior of a, of a Biden, you see that's a next generation philosophy we are applying. That's future. So either you are more the classical car driver and maybe performance oriented, then I would say remain where you are. But if you are uh, appreciating this merge of digital experience in the automotive industry and uh, actually driving a smart device, a computer on wheels, enabling you to be connected, to interact per video conferencing, uh, to do all these, uh, from my perspective, uh, services providing added value to your life, or where you would like to experience health and fitness functionalities in your car because it's a wearable itself, then you, uh, uh, I think you end up with only this car because I have not seen any single one providing this portfolio on this value for money basis. And the starting price? In the US, we will start for, uh, at $45,000. That's the entry price, and we, we are doing a proper product management in order to make sure that we are remaining in an affordable price range. When we started the development, people, and we asked in clinics, asked the people, what do you think, what is it, how much is it? They actually were thinking the double the price, and that's exactly what is our target. We are providing design and quality, which you perceive as double the price, but we want to make it affordable because for us it's much more interesting uh, to be relevant for a broader audience. That makes it worth running our own plant. That makes it worth engineering and investing in all of this because then we have the critical mass, the critical volume behind it. And due to the fact that this car is being designed for the global market, I'm sure that uh, we will find enough customers. I knew the price because you guys told me back in January. I was just checking if you came to your census and actually <laughs> priced it at 60 or 70. You're still sticking with 45? Sticking to 45. So it's after, let's say, California incentive. We're talking about we're talking about Nissan Leaf prices. Yes, exactly. So this is what we are what we are aiming to do, and uh, uh, and that is uh, our mission. Yeah? So we want to uh, develop and produce and market an affordable car. So if I'm not crazy and I want to uh, go ahead and put myself on the reservation list, are you guys taking reservations? Is yes, there a down do. payment? Yeah, so we do reserva take reservations already. So uh, please uh, download the Byton app. Uh, so it's available in the App Store. So you I'm going to put the link down in the description of this video, of course. Of okay. course. And uh, there you can download our app. Uh, there you also get uh, latest updates. Uh, and there you can also uh, place a reservation. Uh, and then, of course, down the road, we will ask those people who place the res a reservation to transform it in a down payment to secure uh, one of the early production slots. Wait, so there is no money down right now? Right now, not. You can just reserve, and this is the first opportunity for you to let us know, hey guys, I'm interested. So there's really no drawback to no. putting... No, for us it's important to, to get the feedback, right? So for us it's much more important to, to know who's, who is interested. And when we launched the car in January in Las Vegas and when we launched the app, we were amazed by the worldwide feedback. So, and it's, for us, it's outstanding to have the direct link to those people because we are not designing and developing this product for us. We are designing it for you and for you, right? So, and this is the reason why we need your feedback and we will also establish in this app co-creation groups and we will ask you for your opinion on different things. And how do you, how do you know who is interested? Of course, maybe I can reach out on, uh, to our Facebook fans or to our uh, other fans and different channels, but this is much more... Uh, uh, reliable and credible and down the road uh, a person then placing a down payment is uh, the authentic customer uh, because then it's serious I want to get off the first one of the first production slots but this is something we do when we get closer to the start of production for the respective market well that's pretty much it I had a great time in Milan and I'm gonna make a couple of other videos about my uh, impression uh, about the city and uh, what why I think the electric cars may not be uh, as popular in Italy in particular in Europe uh, in general as, as we might want and and even hope um, so I'm, I'm gonna share some of those thoughts um, of course if you guys are interested in reserving uh, um, this amazing car there is no down payment it really is I, I don't know why anybody wouldn't um, I have a, a, a link to the reservation page in a description of this video so so definitely check it out. Um, I also wanted to uh, let you guys know that I have um, other exciting guests coming up on the show and I'm uh, really looking forward to that. Um, 
next week i'm gonna have zach and jesse uh on the show i might be uh, at the beijing auto show uh, so that probably is either gonna get pushed or pre-recorded but nevertheless um then john uh lafleur uh vp of workhorse another uh, electric car company that i'm really excited about and then henrik fisker is scheduled to be here in May. They, that that I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one as well. All right, guys, I'm going to have another segment about Byton and more about the car and uh, uh, just my impressions and, and more footage of it. So stay tuned for my channel. Um, other than that, I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.